The following video contains spoilers. We suggest watching the episodes alone in the dark. Happy Holidays, Wolfpack! We're back! And it seems that winter has finally arrived. So what better way to kickstart Christmas time with none other than a heartwarming Are You Afraid of the Dark tale? That's right! Are You Afraid of the Dark is going to try its hand at a scary, heartwarming story. This is The Tale of the Frozen Ghost. Now, if you were hoping that this story was about the ghost of Elsa haunting some stupid kids like I was, well, that's not the case. Sorry, but if you want a hilarious story where Elsa acts truly evil, try Blue Blur X's channel. I hear it's cool. Man, Wolf Entertainment's haunting hour reviews are amazing. It's an alright show, but with hit or miss comedy. Nothing too special. Hey cat, I got our tickets to the Blue Blur X movie. You coming? Not now, Manny. But hey, we're not here to talk about Blue Blur X or that stupid Disney princess. We're here to talk about an ice ghost haunting a naive family during the winter break, while also giving us some heavy emotional moments and intense jump scares. Now, I was going to review this tale for later, but another channel called Pushing Up Roses kind of beat me to the punch, so I had to alter my official Christmas special plans and use this story as the starting point for the holiday theme instead. Though in all honesty, Pushing Up Roses is also a pretty great show that did hit all the marks successfully, and I totally agreed with her opinion. So, with that out of the way, are there any more channels that want me to give them a free plug? Since it's kind of taking me a bit off topic. Yes, it's such a shameful display. Getting back on track, The Tale of the Frozen Ghost was a story that this amazing horror series got a ton of praise for due to its creative storytelling and heartwarming scenes. But sadly, I don't think it holds up that well by today. Yes, I think I found an Are You Afraid of the Dark tale that wasn't as awesome as people claim it is. I have my reasons, which we'll of course be discussing soon. But sadly, I'm going to be the cat who hates something many found touching. Oh, by the way, the Midnight Society are no more. Why? Because they've officially rechanged their group name to something else. In the show's world, there's a big heat wave going on, driving the Midnight Society crazy. So they redubbed themselves the Heat Wave Society. I said we rename it the Heat Wave Society and tell the story about my uncle's pool. See, it's official now. But that's okay, because one of the members claims that her ghost story is so good that it will give everyone the chills. And as you'd expect, we're going to dissect this super cool tale to see if that's true or not. Was this story indeed a powerful winter wonderland of emotion and horror? Or should it stay locked away in the freezer till further notice? Let's find out. This is my review on the Heat Wave Society's Winter Special. So our episode opens up with a whiny rich kid named Charles Pemberton Schilling III traveling in his expensive limo with his tomboy babysitter Daphne and his wacky limo driver, Discount Joe Pesci, who are heading up to the mountains to meet up with family for Christmas. Now, the show doesn't say that it's Christmas time, and just informs the audience that it's winter break. That way, the show doesn't lose all the non-Christian viewers, and squeezes this in as their holiday special. It's the perfect way to trick non-Christian people into watching this. This boy, Charles, is the main protagonist, 
but more focus is given to his babysitter because she's played by none other than Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yes, this episode premiered around the same time Melissa Joanne Hart was rising as a famous child star, so of course, she guest starred on Are You Afraid of the Dark to boost ratings and gain more fame. So, I'll be referring to her as Sabrina, because that's who we all know her as, and not Daphne. Ah, ah, show what you know, Daphne! The main characters are heading up to the mountains, because Charles is supposed to spend time with his distant aunts, Maylene and Greta, over the winter break, because his parents are out of town, visiting a wedding. Problem number one, these main characters are entirely unrelatable. Charles is a spoiled rich kid who complains a lot. He's set up to be an Ebenezer Scrooge-esque character, but that doesn't get much focus in the ghost plot, nor does it go anywhere. Also, Sabrina is not easy to connect with either, because she's a normal babysitter who's apparently being paid to escort her kid to his aunt's farmhouse and actually has to spend her winter break at the aunt's house with him. Why? What kind of a babysitter is paid to spend time with a kid visiting relatives during the Christmas break? That's just plain bizarre and forced. Hey, everyone who's ever been a babysitter out there, remember when you had to babysit a kid, transport him or her to their relatives, and then spend your vacation break living with that child's family over Christmas? No, because that's not how babysitting works, you dopes. This whole setup is already weird, and we haven't even gotten to the ghost yet. Evidently, Charles doesn't even know these distant aunts at all because for some reason he can't stay at his mansion with his babysitter because his parents trust these distant relatives and Sabrina to watch over him together. Makes sense to me. At least on a plus side note, we get some nice driving music by Jeff Fisher. Jeff Fisher? My favorite part is clapping at random it's like I'm a Hollywood insider. Huh, that's a noteworthy name. Oh, by the way, we also get a brief description of Sabrina's ultra-flat character. Daphne has been putting up with I mean, babysitting Charles since she was 12. So she knew what she was getting into. Remember this, because it's going to come back and haunt this episode later. So yeah, the babysitter, the rich kid, and Joe Pesci are driving to this mountain house for winter break and staying with some total strangers where, of course, the house is haunted, as we see when the group arrives at a spooky farm home. No, not quite, but that's a story for another day. This farmhouse is a super spooky setting, since it looks old, abandoned, run down, and has a chair moving all on its own. Oh no, a rocking chair swinging in a windy winter night? How foreboding! This chair is so terrifying that Charles complains that his aunts might be mean and scary spellcasters. But Sabrina says she ain't afraid of no witches. What if they're asleep? What if they get mad at us for waking them up? They don't like us and they're mean to us all week. They're your relatives, not a couple of wicked old witches. I hope. Wow, so Sabrina is going to live in a haunted house with two aunts who might be witches. That's just so hilarious. So Sabrina rings the door, and after a few intense seconds, the aunts come down, revealing that they're pretty nice, normal, fun-loving old ladies. They tell them that their house is in shambles because their main power generator is out, forcing them to live by candlelight. Okay, that explains the power outage, but not the decaying building exterior. 
Oh, but who cares? The hip rockin' grannies bring everyone inside. But after inviting the group in, one of the aunts looks around suspiciously, ensuring that nobody sees them. Hmm, she could be looking for a frozen ghost. Or she could just be letting one loose. So, limo driver Joe Pesci drops off their bags and leaves, proving what an absolutely pointless character he was. Seriously, why pay a driver actor when Sabrina could have drove the car here instead? The aunts give the kids the grand tour of their haunted house, where we get a few scary scenes of the decor. We then dissolve to a few seconds later, where the aunts unload all of their bags, because Joe Pesci was a lazy jerk, before the old ladies very awkwardly alert us that there's a ghost haunting the house. Yeah, just like that, with no smooth transition whatsoever, the aunts tell the characters and spoil the fact that there's a ghost haunting the place. I think the show wanted to go for a comedy moment here, but it fails at being both funny and scary thanks to how awkward and forced this conversation is. I mean, really? This is how we cleverly drop hints of the frozen ghost? Granted, I'm glad that they want to get to the point faster, but it's so badly executed. But whatever, who cares, right? Just paved the way for the ice ghost already. Well then, I have good news for all of you waiting patiently in anticipation. We don't physically see the frozen ghost until halfway in the episode. <sighs> Instead, we cut to the kids acting like petty morons, arguing with each other about unpacking their clothes the right way. Whoa, these writers truly know what you kids are into these days. Charles whines about how his aunts are so weird and old and that this farmhouse sucks until he hears a ghostly wail. But Sabrina tells him there's nothing to worry about, since it was probably just the wind. Really? That cliché still isn't dead yet? Ugh, okay. We later cut to- Ah! Little boy nudity! Oh, jackpot! WTF, are you afraid of the dark? I'm all for fan service aimed for the female viewers, but this is way too young. So, after Charles' sexy bathing scene, our kid hero hears more ghostly wails echoing throughout the room before the ghost pulls on the light bulb. Oh, the horror! The horror! What do you think the ghost will do next? Move the furniture around? So, Charles is helpless, unarmed, and trapped in the bathroom with a frozen ghost. What happens next? Absolutely nothing, because we cut to Sabrina exchanging exposition with the old aunts. Yeah, no joke, nothing happens to Charles in this scene at all. This intense horror scenario was perfectly gift-wrapped for the show, and the writers did absolutely nothing with it. What a waste. Anyways, we get exposition between Sabrina and the ditzy aunts where they reveal that they're losing the farmhouse because they can't afford their mortgage payments anymore. Oh please, do go on. I'd rather hear more about this dull subplot on your money troubles rather than the killer ice ghost. It's what all the kids came here to see. 
when Sabrina asks them why they don't just borrow money from Charles's rich family, they say they can't do that due to a family feud that sparked between them a long time ago, thanks to a poor error of judgment. Apparently, their father and Charles' grandfather hired a former criminal as a farmhand to work for them around the barn, but the ex-con was really a thief who jacked all their riches and made a run for it. The thief was eventually caught and sent to prison via a train, but by a freak accident, the train got into a brutal crash, killing all the convicts, including the thief that stole from their family. They state that his body was never found, and neither were their stolen family riches. Rumor has it that something is out there, still searching for it. Alright, cool backstory. So you'd think that this dead convict is going to be our frozen ghost, right? <laughs> no. You'll see when we get there. The aunts continue informing Sabrina that the con man stole their money and hid it somewhere in the forest to come back to it once the heat died down. But sadly, it was never found in all that time. Their guardians blamed each other for this misfortune, and as a result, they no longer spoke with each other ever again. Charles's family became the money-grubbing Scrooge family, and the aunts lived a lower-class lifestyle on the farm, and... Oh my god, who the hell cares? Great point. Does anyone watching care about this? Do any of you, watching a tale called The Frozen Ghost, give a remote crap about the family's tragic subplot? No, nobody does. Where the heck is that ghost? There was supposed to be a frozen ghost in this ghost story, right? To sum up, this entire scene is an overly long exposition dump and blatant fake-out to make us assume that the frozen ghost is the evil spirit of the dead con man who stole the family's gold or some bullcrap, but in the end, it's a false build-up to get us ready for the real plot twist. Ordinarily, I'd praise how stuff like this gives depth to the story, but it goes on for so long and gets boring, convoluted, overly complex, and worst of all, barely ties into the actual ghost story. It's a misleading fake-out to shove us off track, plain and simple. Secondly, why is Sabrina the one asking all this? She's not the main character. Charles is the main character. Charles is the one encountering the ghost. Charles is the one with a character arc to overcome. Charles is supposed to be our kid hero. And yet it's Sabrina who seems to actually be asking for all this information, even though she herself doesn't believe in the frozen ghost. Yes, seriously, she never sees the stupid ghost until the end, yet she's our detective? My point is, shouldn't Charles be the one learning about all this craziness? It makes me ask why the story didn't have one main character instead of two, because both Sabrina and Charles could very easily be compressed as a single protagonist. They both waste screen time that could be more useful to this episode's actual plot. But instead, it wants both these kids to have story arcs that go nowhere. Oh, but who cares, because we then get an Evil Dead ripoff. So the family and the babysitter have dinner together, but then the ghost knocks over the pie! <laughs> Gasp! Really upping the ante here, frozen ghost! But the loopy aunts tell the kids that there's nothing to worry about, since it's just the wind. 
Yet that doesn't stop them from foreshadowing the possibility of a ghost being in the house. Can somebody please tell me why this story is taking its sweet, sweet time waiting until the frozen ghost actually appears? Because this is so, so boring! But Cat, you're being too hard! It's a kid's show! Yeah, a show that's boring the kids by delaying the ice ghost's appearance, ruining any sense of fun! Later that night, Charles tries to sleep, but wouldn't you know, all this talk about ghosts haunting the house gives him nightmares, as he hears more loud ghostly wails. But then, Charles has a vision, where he's attacked by a metrosexual Mario, who steals his coat. But then the boy wakes up. Where? Are you ready for this? The window flies open, all on its own! But wait, there's more, because we finally, finally, get our first glimpse at the Frozen Ghost. A ghost? A ghost? A what? A ghost? Oh, Charles, you are so lucky. You are the only one who Yes, everyone, this is the Frozen Ghost. I bet you all thought it was going to be the ghost of that murderous thief back for revenge and to collect his lost gold. You know, like how the aunts foreshadowed? Nope, the Frozen Ghost this whole time is a pale little white boy wearing glow-in-the-dark pajamas. Wow, there are no words to describe how underwhelmingly disappointed I am. This is seriously our frozen ghost, folks. The most unintimidating child you have ever seen. I think that the white we see all over his body is meant to imply that the ghost has frostbite or a Mr. Freeze mutation, but it just looks like a sickly glowing child covered in baby powder. I mean, what comes to your mind when you think of a frozen ghost? An ice monster? A yeti? An evil version of Elsa? There are so many forms this monster could have been, and what did they choose? A cute little boy who feels cold a lot. Fail, frozen ghost. Fail. Oh, by the way, much like the Shadow Man, he repeats the exact same quote over and over and over again, like a Pokemon. What a compelling character you are. So yeah, our supernatural character kind of sucks, but the show still attempts to play this kid as a horrifying surprise. Naturally, Charles reacts to this ghost manifestation by hilariously panicking in a comedic fashion. Charles tries telling his babysitter Sabrina that there's a ghost haunting his bedroom, 
But of course, she doesn't believe him. <laughs> The next day, Sabrina tells the aunts about Charles acting crazy last night for thinking that a ghost is haunting the house. Where the aunts pretty much reveal that, yeah, we know, there's totally a ghost haunting our house. Yes, really. They know. They know that the ghost exists and has been haunting them for years. They just don't care and simply ignore it. I'm not even kidding around. Both the aunts are fully aware of the frozen ghost and have been living with it for years now. But they just completely ignore him since he doesn't enter the house or bother them. Our spooky ice ghost is only a tiny nuisance in their lives. This matter-of-factly reaction simply kills all tension remaining in this episode. The very idea that the aunts treat the frozen ghost as a minor inconvenience robs all fear we're supposed to have for the kid. The big plot twist involves us learning the ghost's true motivation, but the overall story still expects us to be as scared of the frozen ghost like how we are towards the pool monster, or Nosferatu, or the ghastly grinner. But it just doesn't work, precisely because the main characters aren't that scared of the ghost. Charles is terrified of the spirit, but nobody else is, and the scene of the aunts downplaying a ghost activity lowers the audience's fear of the specter too. Oh, but guess what? It gets worse! The aunts also know some of the frozen ghost's backstory. Yeah, pretty much out of nowhere too, so the show can keep the plot going. Where they tell us that the frozen ghost is the spirit of the dead son of one of their neighbors from up the road a ways, who used to visit the aunts frequently for fun and for free cookies, until one day the boy got lost in the forest. He was gone for a few days until the adults eventually found him frozen to death. But for some reason, the child's soul still haunts these mountains to finish off some ulterior motive. Okay, I'll admit that this is a pretty decent concept, but there are still a huge load of problems with it. Number one, it's not as interesting as the fake-out backstory with the evil con man. Hate to say it, but a full-on villain could have been way better here than the tragic villain the show wants to have. Number two, and the most important side note, show don't tell. They tell us the Frozen Ghost's origin story. They tell us who the Ghost Boy was in life. They tell us why we should view the Frozen Ghost as a tragic victim cursed forever. But they never show us. And this is a huge problem featured all throughout this entire bore of a plot. The main characters are constantly talking about all the scary hijinks, but they aren't showing enough action. The tale of the frozen ghost is stuffed to the brim with overly long exposition to make the story feel deep and stronger. But the problem is that this episode could be trimmed down if it showed us all these interesting concepts instead of pausing the scary scenes to tell us all the important information. We're nearing the end of the tale and yet I still don't care for any of these characters. Why? Well, we waste so much time dropping exposition, giving fake-out jump scares, and building everything up without throwing in a small element to make us want to care for these people. The money problems are not enough substance in a tale about a ghost child, nor is a mini Scrooge learning how to be nicer. Oh, but you want to know the best part of this villain backstory moment? 
It's not the tragic death of a child, or the out-of-nowhere exposition dump, or the aunts nonchalantly dismissing death, or the dark beginning to our creepy ghost. It's Sabrina's reaction to it. They said he froze to death poor thing. That's sad. Yeah, that's the appropriate reaction I'd have to a child's brutal death, too. Wouldn't you all feel the same as Sabrina? Cat, I have some bad news. Your brother Wolf got into a harsh accident while driving here for Christmas. He's in the hospital right now. We don't know if he'll make it for the holidays. Oh no. That's sad. That's so sad. That's sad. So sad. Sad. It's so sad. So very, very sad. That's sad. Sad. That's so sad. Sad, sad, sad. So sad. Oh well, who cares? Back to the review. But uh-oh, the fireplace goes out, meaning that the kids need to go outside into the dark, scary forest to gather up some firewood. Firewood! Yep, our kid heroes have to collect firewood, you know, outside, in the cold, windy winter, where the frozen ghost is waiting. This could lead to a ton of fantastic horror potential, but don't get your hopes up. So the kids head out on their fetch quest, where naturally, Charles cries a lot and fears that he'll get dirty. No, seriously, that's the bigger issue at hand. Charles is not afraid of the frozen ghost capturing him, but rather the fact that he might get dirty being outside. He is so afraid of this that he cries rarity style. You know, it really says a lot that the child being haunted by a ghost is more afraid of filthy debris over the supernatural entity, because it's the perfect way to soil all dread within your antagonist. He cries so much that his babysitter Sabrina straight up bullies him and talks down to the boy, unleashing all her inner anger out on him. She even shoves him around and smears mud all over him. I can't take it anymore. You are a complete and total one. I am not. You are too. You're always finding an excuse not to do things. What are you going to quit being such a freak? I'm not a freak. Yeah, right. If it weren't for me, you'd be a total couch potato sitting at home playing a nice safe video game in your nice clean clothes. What's wrong with clean clothes? You want to know what's wrong with clean clothes? I'll show you what's wrong with clean Oh, look, he's still alive. What a surprise. Okay, where the heck did this all come from? Seriously, this girl is just mildly annoyed by this guy in most scenes, but then she just snaps and treats him like crap. There is no natural flow leading up to this point at all. Remember this clip from the beginning? Yeah, she knows what she's getting into. Meaning that you'd think Sabrina would be used to this rarity wannabe's excessive complaining by now. But Sabrina acts like Charles provoked her to the point of insanity. While I do agree that this kid can get grating at times, it was never to the point where I wanted somebody to beat him down and shove mud in his face. The show is acting like Charles is constantly crying all the time, push Sabrina past her patience. 
but truth be told, he hasn't been that horrible in all this time. He's just been kind of a wuss. It makes Sabrina look like a total bully and worse than he is supposed to be. Charles is meant to be our discount Ebenezer Scrooge, but the worst things he's done so far is just act annoying and cowardly, not mean-spirited, selfish, or ungrateful. Charles is acting as bad as Rarity in her whiny moments, but the show wants us to hate him at Dave from Total Drama levels of hate. But it hasn't reached there yet. If the show wants to make Sabrina look like this strong, independent woman standing up to this dumb, useless male, then Charles needs to act nastier than this. But we can't have the boy acting too mean, otherwise it would ruin our big emotional ending. The audience is supposed to cheer Sabrina on for her actions when she's making Charles toughen up and showing him the error of his ways. But it's done so poorly that it makes Sabrina look like the character in the wrong here. Seriously, this is just straight up bullying. To make matters worse, the show attempts to follow up this gross scene with the big climax literally a few seconds later. However, we hate Sabrina now and hope she doesn't live in the end. Which is very poor timing and badly written for the kind of heavy story this really is by the conclusion. I don't like Charles that much, but now I really don't like Sabrina even more. Which stinks because we're supposed to see this scene as their character development. But just then, the ghost calls for them. Where, like a moron, Sabrina wanders off to check it out alone. Bye, hope you die. But considering how much I hate her, she'll probably gain a happy ending. We then get a pretty awesome effect of the frozen ghost slowly coming for our main character. But then, the show ruins it by just making the climax a dumb jump scare chase scene. We get a pretty lame chase scene of Charles bumping into the frozen ghost all over the forest a few times to the point of ridiculousness. It's dull, not scary, is super cheap, tells us nothing about these characters, and is rendered unintentionally hilarious thanks to the ghost teleporting all over the place like Batman. But we can't let Sabrina escape that easily. Quick, activate the vomit shield! So Charles pathetically sprints around before he face falls into the mud.
Jeez, the mud is scarier to him than the stupid ghost is. That's how lame this is, people. Don't worry, though, because Sabrina shows up just in time to save the day, where they both finally see the frozen ghost. The frozen ghost at long last reveals his true plan. He points his finger at a log in the woods where it's shown that all he wanted was to get his coat back. <sighs> Charles realizes that the frozen ghost was never really evil at all. He was just a victim this whole time. Wait, it gets stupider. Charles explains to Sabrina that his dreams have been visions this entire time that the ghost somehow gave to him, revealing the frozen ghost's backstory. It turns out that the deceased neighborhood boy actually saw the thief who stole the family's money out in the woods and was attacked by him. The boy stole his key and the thief chased him into that log where he ripped off the kid's coat before the child fled away in fear, where he then froze to death because he didn't have the coat that was stolen from him. The thief then hid the coat in the log to cover up his tracks before he was captured later. The coat hid the key for the thief's secret treasure chest, and the kid died knowing where the hidden loot box was all along. Wow, that's not overly complicated for the children at all. So Charles uncovers the lost coat and returns it to the ghost boy, where it transforms the frozen ghost into a real boy. And then the frozen ghost peacefully thanks them as he ascends into the afterlife. Yep, this was the emotional climax we were building up to the whole time, folks. The frozen ghost was not an evil monster, but instead a tragic victim who just wanted his coat back to move on to heaven. All he needed was the gentle warmth of human kindness. Ugh. What the heck are you afraid of the dark? You took this awesome, creepy concept and turned it into the most schmaltzy, lovey-dovey, preschool-friendly pile of rainbow vomit that makes My Little Pony look butch in comparison. Oh yeah, I said it. I went there. My Little Pony looks badass compared to this nauseating sunshine and rainbows pile of feces. I'll go more in depth on my feelings towards this in the final thoughts, but in short, this moment is so cheesy and so child-friendly that it destroyed this whole heartwarming tale for me personally. Anyways, back to the episode recap. Get this, the show thinks that we're so stupid that the kid heroes actually explain to us exactly what we just saw a few seconds ago. But then, I kid you not, the ghost gave them a key achievement that they unlocked for helping it. Yep, this has officially turned into a video game. The kids show the magic key to the aunts, who reveal that it's their long-lost fireplace key, which they use to unlock the hidden gold treasure. Yes, 
This is the twist ending. The family's long lost gold that the thief employee stole was hidden in their old dying fireplace the whole time. And now they just saved this farmhouse. In the end, the ghost boy returned the favor for being so nice to him. I guess we're supposed to assume that the frozen ghost knew the key would help them out, but the episode gives no clarity on this, so it feels a bit lacking. Oh, but just as the episode ends, the Midnight Society, oh, I'm sorry, the Heat Wave Society, also explained to us what we just saw. And that's the end of the episode. The Heat Wave Society pretends that this was a good story and leave feeling cool after listening to that epic fail. So, how does this episode hold up? Well, it sucks! It sucks. I mean it. What the heck happened? This show was doing so well. It was dark. It was creepy. It was well written. The characters were pretty cool. The supernatural stuff was fun and adventurous. This is something they thought would be cool? This episode is the safest, most boring, poorly thought out pile of fluff that I have ever seen in my life. It tries so hard to touch your hearts with the heartwarming scene of two children from totally different backgrounds, one rich, the other poor, coming together in this powerful scene showing an act of kindness towards one another, representing Christmas. But without any of the depth or deeper character traits, it all rings completely hollow. It's not two polar opposites sharing a grand gesture of kindness towards one another. It's the equivalent of telling two boys to get along together and be nice. This is the most synthetic, soulless, manufactured heartwarming scene I have ever watched. The two boys have very badly designed character arcs, so I don't feel a thing for either of them in this big climatic gesture of human love. We don't know jack about the frozen ghost, other than he was just some poor unlucky kid who died. And we don't really feel for Charles, because he hasn't really accomplished much in his own character arc to warrant our appreciation for him. Seriously, I've rewatched this tale multiple times to make sure my opinion had valid points. And let me tell you, Charles was a completely useless character through his own hero's journey. Charles doesn't do anything in this story other than get scared by the ghost and run away. Sabrina is the one who forces him to toughen up. Sabrina is the one who gathers up all the information to solve the mystery. And worst of all, Sabrina is the one who forces Charles to talk to the ghost. He didn't do it himself, somebody else made him do it. In a more powerful story, Charles would be learning all this stuff on his own. He would be the person solving the mystery. He would be the one to reach a helping hand out to the ghost. That way, it shows our protagonist growing up and developing as a character. Charles is intended to be a Scrooge archetype who goes from being a bratty rich kid who's afraid to even get dirty to a down-to-earth social boy who is willing to help out a lower-class dead kid move on in his own life. But with Sabrina dragging him along on his own character arc, and the story wasting so much time trying to fake us out, this important scene lacks the power behind its punch. Really, this whole problem could have been easily solved if the show removed Sabrina and had Charles doing all the work. Not use this as an opportunity to promote Sabrina the Teenage Witch or whichever of her shows was popular at the time. 
the babysitter Sabrina is a flat character who was supposed to be a strong, independent woman for the little girls to look up to, but she comes across as a jerk bully who is worse than our kid Scrooge. The aunts are idiots, and I didn't care much for them or their dumb, boring money subplot. And worst of all is the titular frozen ghost. The supernatural spirit sucked. There was so much potential and so much buildup for a lousy payoff. Granted, the idea of making a villain seem like this tough, dark entity, only for it to turn out that it's a frightened little child who wants an innocent goal, is a good concept. But the way the show goes with it just falls flat on its face. In all honesty, one of the nicest things I have to say about this tale is that it was 100% original. Really, the writing on this story was so good at being unpredictable that there wasn't a moment where I felt like I knew what was going to happen next. I never once said, Oh, I know this is going to happen next in the story, or this part is cliched. It was good at misleading me, but the major problem still remains. This episode is all dragged out build-up for a stupid, disappointing payoff. The big, heartwarming scene where these two polar opposites come together to be nice to one another doesn't feel as strong as the show wants us to think it is, precisely because the heavy emotions to this moment feel unearned. Charles didn't learn anything to come to this point, and the frozen ghost didn't have enough exposure for us to feel sorry for him. The characters don't feel like they've changed by the end, which is a bad sign in any story. Charles doesn't feel like one with the people, Sabrina is still a jerk, and the ghost is still a bland little boy we know nothing about. Maybe if the show didn't waste so much time dropping exposition or giving us a fake-out thread or dedicating all screen time to the build-up of the ghost, then maybe, maybe it could have succeeded. But it didn't. At least for me. I was so bored and disappointed watching this. It was a failure with all build-up to a lackluster payoff. So, congratulations, Are You Afraid of the Dark?, this is the first episode I'm giving a bronze skull. The Tale of the Frozen Ghost is a slow, boring, bland, nasty, shallow, manipulative, sappy, disappointing story that doesn't even come close to reaching terrifying horror or even the fantastic heartfelt fuzzies. To make it all the more worse, the episode thinks that we're so stupid that they have to explain everything for us just so we'd understand what their story is saying. Respectfully, it is not the worst thing I have ever seen, but it is just a weak, weak story. I'd only recommend seeing it if you have really little kids, since it's a safe, overly sweet and nauseating pile of fluff that has no nightmare fuel in it. The story doesn't make me want to urinate on it like Poop de Fromage or My Robot do, but it is just so pathetic to see this amazing horror series sink to such a low. I can understand and respect Are You Afraid of the Dark for wanting to shake up the formula and offer us a nice heartwarming tale, but it's no toy train or grandpa's glasses. What more can I say? The Frozen Ghost has its heart in the right place, but with this lackluster writing and cheap dollar store symbolism, it left me feeling so, so bitterly cold. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, or just tune in for more videos posted here on Wolf Entertainment. I'm your host, Catastrophe, and I hope you all take advice from this episode's good message by being kind to one another out there. Life is short. Don't waste it being a jerk. Happy Holidays, Wolfpack!